praise to the Lord. Oh, praise to the Most High. So tonight's topic is called the evil acts of envy. The evil acts of envy. The evil acts of envy. Let's open up with the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Let's start there. Genesis 4 and verse 1. Genesis chapter 4, verse no, 1. Mm. Before you get that, before you get that, let me back up a second. Before you get that, hold on. How could I forget that? Okay, let me share my screen. Let me share my screen. Okay. Okay. Um, read the definition of envy. Read that. The definition of envy. Noun. Mm -hmm. A, feel, a feeling of discontented or resentful longing arised by, aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or luck. Okay, so now, read that part again. I want you to read the definition again. There's something I want out of that definition. Read again. The definition of envy. A uh, feeling of discontented. A, a feeling. A what? A feeling. You see, that's the key right there. You see, the root, the what the the, the spirit that's work, that that's moving in the in the brother or sister that has the spirit of envy, it's what feelings, emotions, e toxic emotions. So envy is toxic emotions. You understand? That's was a feeling of discontented or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions qualities or luck. We don't deal with that. We don't deal with luck. Okay, now jump down to the next definition. Desire, read that. Verb. Desire to have a quality, position, mm -hmm. or other desirable thing belonging to someone else. You see that thing? It's a desire to have a quality, possession, or other desirable thing belonging to someone else. So envy, guess what? The spirit that also working with envy is covetousness. You understand? That's what the spirit does. With, that's the spirit that's working in envy. You understand? Covetousness. Now let's get the let's get the synonyms. Okay, I'm gonna go to jealousy. Okay. Hmm. Hold on a second. Okay, read that signs of envy. These are the signs of envy, okay? Healthy competition, start from there. Signs of envy. Healthy competition mm -hmm. between people can be good. So now healthy but competition, no, no, no. There's no such thing as healthy competition in the Bible. You understand? Because competition, it's, this is an oxymoron, okay? Healthy competition between people can be good. That's an oxymoron right there, you understand? Iso like to throw things in there. Keep reading. But when you're feeling unhappy, when others achieve success or feel the need to constantly one up their accomplishments, uh -huh. you may be experiencing envy. You see that thing? It says, but when you are feeling, here's that word again, feeling, emotions, toxic emotions. When you are feeling or you, when, when you have toxic emotions, when others achieve success or feel the need to constantly one up their accomplishments, meaning what? You always want to outdo your brother. You always want to outdo your sister. You understand? He says, you may be experiencing envy. Yes, you got that devil on you. Okay, come on. Signs of envy include. Mm -hmm. You aren't happy for others when they achieve success. You see that thing? He says, you are not happy for others when they achieve success. Meaning, and this, this is not, is not, is not always, is not talking about somebody that is on a higher level than you. No, no, no. This, this, these toxic emotions, they, they happen among the peers. These toxic emotions, they happen among peers. Brothers that are on the, similar areas you understand or age group and so forth that's where this that spirit is very hot in that area you understand read that part again you aren't what you aren't happy for others when they achieve success 
You're not happy for others when they achieve success, so you are jealous. Envy is jealous. Go ahead. Another person's success makes you feel unhappy. Another person's success make you want to make you hate them. Because that's where that's where the spirit of envy is jealous. You understand? Jealousy, the root of jealousy and envy is what? Hate. So another person's success makes you feel unhappy. Meaning what? You start to develop the spirit of hatred towards them, jealousy towards them. Go ahead. You feel the need to diminish someone else's success. You see that thing? You feel the need. You see that thing? The minute you feel the need, the minute, you know, you, you, you listen, you feel the need. Feeling, again, emotional. You feel the need to diminish someone else's success. You constantly one up their accomplishments in the paragraph above. Go ahead. You judge others negatively. You know, this, this is not talking about the scripts. It's talking about when meaning what? Let's say, hmm, let's, let's get an example. Let's say you, you buy a house, right? And then you tell a brother or sister, you know, I bought a house. And then the brother, the brother will say, mm, but it's not, it's, it's too small. You know, stuff like that. Uh-huh. That's the spirit. That's the that's that that's that's right there. That's the spirit of envy. You understand? The spirit of envy, which is the spirit of hatred. You understand? Read. You're happy when others face setbacks. You see that part right there? He says, you are happy when others face setbacks. Meaning what? A brother might stumble in the truth. That makes you happy. Say, cool. That means that, you understand? You know, I don't have to worry about this Negro right here. You understand? That right there, it happens a lot in Israel, by the way. He says, you are happy when others face setbacks. Not considering that you also can fall in the same trap. Because never ever say, oh, that will never happen to me. You simple as hell. If you think that way, you better get rid of that type of mindset. You understand? Read that part again. You're happy when others face setbacks. You are happy when others face setbacks. Okay, read that now. These are seven signs that someone is secretly jealous of you. Read that. Seven warning signs that someone is secretly jealous of you. You see, the key, the key, the key, the key, the key here is secretly, secretly, is the seven warning signs that someone is secretly jealous of you. So guess what? Because remember, envy is not tangible. Envy is, is, is intangible, but envy, it's, it's, you know, it runs deep in the spirit. You can't see it. They hide it very well. You understand? That's why it says secretly. Okay. Now let's see. Hmm. Read that. Jealousy that what? Jealousy that goes unnoticed or ignored can escalate into toxic behavior that can transform your friend so drastically. Read. You, you might not even recognize them anymore. You see that thing? Because jealousy, that spirit of jealousy, now, now you are clothed with jealousy and envy and hatred. He says, now we can't even recognize you anymore. He says, jealousy that goes unnoticed, because remember, it's secret, okay? Or ignored can escalate, because you have the spirit of jealousy. You have the spirit of envy. You have the spirit of hatred. So you ignore it. You read the script, you just ignore it. It's like water off your duck's back. He says, now he says, ignored can escalate into toxic behavior. So because envy, hatred, and jealousy, these are toxic emotions, okay? He says, that can transform your friends so drastically, meaning completely, you might not even recognize them. And guess what? They won't see it in themselves either, okay? Read on. The issue here is that most people hide these feelings deep inside. You see that thing? The issue here is most people, not some, most, because this is a heavy demon in the world and even in Israel, is that the issue here is that most people hide these feelings deep inside. You understand? So it, it, it consumes you. It consumes you. Anything where their name comes up, it just reminds you of how I, really I hate that nigga. I can't stand that brother. You see that? Go ahead. 
and it's hard for us to tell if they are jealous of us or not. You see that thing? It says it's difficult to even tell if they are jealous of you or not. You understand? Keep reading. Thankfully, there are a few ways to tell if your friend is harboring negative feelings about you. So it says there are a few ways to tell if your friend, quote unquote, is harboring negative feelings about you. Because these are negative feelings, toxic emotions, that they are harboring it. You understand? So you are stockpiling evil. You are stockpiling hatred. You are stockpiling the spirit of envy. You understand? Which is a murderous spirit. You are stockpiling that stuff. Watch this. Mm. The first one. Number one, they compliment you with an insult. They compliment you with an insult because why? The spirit of envy is running rampant in their speech, in their conduct and so forth. Now they're giving some examples here, they're animated. So read that, this is an example. I bought read my that. first house. Hmm. It's okay, but it's a bit small. You see that? Envy, jealousy. Hmm. Read again. I bought my first house. Uh -huh. It's okay, but it's a bit small. You see, I bought my first house. I bought my first house supposed to be, wow, all praise to the most high. Ah, it's okay. Yeah, but it's small, you know. Mm, you see that? That's the demon right there. Okay, let's keep going. The next one. Number two, they gloat mm -hmm. at your mistakes. They gloat. Remember what we read in the previous definition? Um, it says, read that, read, read, read this highlighted part. You're happy when others face setbacks. You are happy when others face setbacks. Now let's go back to the definition again. Okay. The definition are the second sign of envy. Read that. Number two, they gloat at your mistakes. They gloat at your mistakes. You see that? Let's get the let's get some examples. Read that. Remember when you got fired? Remember when you got fired? You understand? It's like, okay, I oh, I got a new job. Yeah, but you remember you got fired from the last one. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> okay, let's go to the third one. Number three. They make excuses to be away from you. They make excuses to be away from you, meaning what? They cannot stand your company. Okay, let's get some examples. Read. Let's hang out. Oh, let's hang out. I can't. Mm, really? I'm busy. I can't. I'm busy. You're busy, but you're not busy. So you, guess what? The spirit of envy, anger, and jealousy, and hatred, guess what? will cause you to lie because these are escalate. These, these spirits, they go hand in hand. It's a domino effect. You understand? Now your brother calls you up and say, you, you know, let's, 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 he calls you up. You just want to chat and so forth. You know, like, I'm busy. I can't talk to you. Okay. I'm busy. So, but you're not busy at that point. You just lying to your brother or your sister just so that you can find an excuse not to talk to your neighbor because you don't have that spirit of charity, okay? Uh, the fourth definition, read that. Number four, they gossip about you. They gossip about you. Let's get some example. Remember, this is childbearing. We just read it in, uh, when we're going over the prayer in Surah 51, mm -hmm. slenderous tongue, read. She is not good at all. She's not good at all. So guess what? So. No compliments, bad compliments all, all, always, because there's a spirit of jealousy, you understand, working within these spirits, okay? Mm. Yes, read the fifth definition. Number five, they uh -huh. tell you that you're lucky. They tell you that you're lucky, not that you worked hard. No, that, you know, you got lucky. Okay, let's get some examples. I got hired for my dream job. Mm. You're just lucky. You just lucky. You see that? 
So those are subtleties in speeches, okay? Let's get started. Let's get let's get the next one. I'm not gonna read all the other stuff. Uh, number six. Number six, they mm -hmm. diminish your achievements. They diminish your achievement. Isn't that the same thing that we read? Yeah, you feel the need to diminish someone else's success because of what envy, jealousy. You don't want them to progress. Okay, read the get the uh, read the examples now. Come on. I think he'll propose to me. Mm -hmm. Don't get your hopes up. Don't get your hopes up. You understand? I'm gonna deal with these things. Hmm. Yes, the seventh one. Number seven. They mm. always want to be around you. They always want to be around you. Because now you that might confuse some of you. What would why? Hmm. I'll give an example. Watch this. Give me look. Okay, give me look. I'm gonna explain it with this. Luke 20, Luke 20 verse 20. Luke chapter 20 verse 20. Come on. And they watched him. They did what? And they watched him. This is the scribes and Pharisees. They watched him. Him is Christ. Go ahead. And sent forth spies. They sent forth spies to see what he was doing, how he was teaching, and how many people are following him. Go ahead. Which should feign themselves just men. Meaning what? They're going to fake the fun. They're going to make it seem like they're about this truth, but they are not. You understand? And that spirit is popping up in Israel and again. In this camp particularly, I'm seeing that thing again. Hmm. Read that thing again. Luke chapter 20, verse 20. Go ahead. And they watched him and sent forth spies, which should feign themselves just men. We should feign themselves just men, just fakes, okay? Faking the funk. Go ahead. That they might take hold of his words. You see that part right there? That they might take hold of his words. They might take hold of his words. Because that's why when Christ was teaching, the scribes and Pharisees and their watchdogs, they'll just be following to see what he's teaching, what he's talking about and so forth. Yes, yeah, so that they might use his words against him. Go ahead. That so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. Because these are spies. You understand? Guess what? Don't think that they are no spies. They are spies. These things, they are real. Because we are reading about them here. You understand? And sent forth spies. You understand? Spies, when they are sent into the camp, they get closer to leadership. To see, to understand, to, to figure out, okay, what is this talking about? What is the vision? You understand? What are the what what are what are we trying to achieve? You understand? They're gonna make it seem like they're really interested in the vision. Can't they? they are actually what? What are they? They are searching you out. They are trying to figure out what is the next move, where's the level of understanding and so forth. Mm -hmm. Don't think I can see me, I can descend speeches here. I'm good with that. I can pick you out in your speech I'm in that micro right there. I'm gonna watch you. Why? Because we are reading about it here. Christ said, you better watch because they're gonna send forth spies, informants. You understand? They are going to ascend up to get to management, to leadership, to figure out, get close to this brother right there, get close to that one, figure out what he's talking about. Look, figure out what his weaknesses are and so forth. Because, but you forgot because you are so, you are so demonic, you forget that there is a God. The God of Israel and none else. You forget that. Okay? Watch this. Now, that's it on that. Okay? Give me the book of Genesis 4. Okay? Give me. Hmm. No, no, no. No, no. Before we get there. Hold on a second. Let's go back. Let's go back. Okay? Go back to the definition of envy. Read that again. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me slow down a little bit. Okay, read that. Cliche, sir. Okay, okay, let me share, let me share. I'm sorry, let me share my screen. Okay, read that, the definition of envy. The definition of envy. Mm -hmm. A feeling of discontented or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions qualities or luck so now envy goes into what jealousy which goes into hatred you understand 
let's get there. Let's let's click on this. Jealous. Okay. I want you to read that. Jealous. The definition of jealousy. The mm -hmm. state or feeling of being jealous. The state, the state or feeling of being jealous. Because guess what? Once you are stuck in that mode and you don't use the scriptures to get rid of that demon, you're going to be in that state. That's going to be your state of mind. And the, because that's your state of mind, it's going to consume you. Now you're going to start to plan and plot and scheme, deceive and lie. You understand? Just so that you can, because you hate that brother, you hate that sister, or you hate something that, brought, that, that came out during the council, or you hate something that was said during the correction. Now you are hovering it because why? You are emotion. You are emotional. So you, you, you stockpile the evil. You understand? Okay. Read that. Full definition of jealous. Read that. The definition of jealous. Mm -hmm. Hostile toward a rival or one believed to enjoy advantage. You see that thing? He says they are hostile towards a rival because you see your brother as a rival. You, a rival means an enemy or one believed to enjoy an advantage. You think this brother is an advantage because of X, Y, and Z. Because the, all of these, remember, these are all imaginations of men. You understand? These are all imaginations. This stuff is not real. You're making it up in your head and you believe that lie. Okay? Read. Envious, his success made his old friend jealous. So because of success, progress, you understand? When there's progress, Negroes always find a way to mess things up. You understand? That's the spirit of envy. The spirit of hatred. Okay? Now, watch this. Let's get, let's, let's, let's look this, let's, let's look this word up. Bitterness. Mm. Read the definition of bitterness. The definition of bitterness. Noun. Mm -hmm. Sharpness of taste. Lack of sweetness. Sharpness of taste, lack of sweetness. Okay, watch this. Bitterness. Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs 27. So I can just clarify this when they say sharpness. Because this they go into you know juice and all that. But I want to show you something about that thing. Okay. Because we're not looking for that, but I want to show you something. Give me Proverbs 27, verse 9. Proverbs 27, verse 9. Read that. Proverbs 27, verse 9. Right. Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. Mm -hmm. So doth the sweetness of a man's friend by hurt by hearty counsel. By hearty counsel. Hearty counsel is the counsel of the most high because your mind must be about God's commandment. He says, ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. The ointment and the perfume here goes into what? The laws of God. Because guess what? When you apply God's commandments, you become that, uh, you become. That, that, that sacrifice that is holy, guess what? The Lord is going to smell a sweet savor from you. You understand? Ointment and perfume rejoice the mind. So that the sweetness of a man's friend by a hearty cancer. Okay, so guess what? This brother, this brother right here has no root of bitterness in him. You understand? Because he understands that the laws of God is pure gold and he will apply them to his life. Okay, to get rid of that toxicity that exists in his spirit that is hovering. Okay, as if you're gonna get a prize or something. Okay, get read the second definition of that. Read that. Anger or disappointment at being treated unfairly. Resentment. Resentment. So bitterness, which is jealousy. Okay, envy. That's the state of being bitter. That's bitterness. Okay, watch this. Hmm. That's a big one right there. This one right here. Read the definition. Because these are all synonyms. Okay. Envy, jealousy, bitterness, grudge. It's all the same thing. They are all synonyms. Okay. Read that. The definition of grudge. Now. Read. A persistent feeling of mm. ill will or resentment resulting from a past insult or injury. Because you can't let stuff go. You stockpile evil. 
You stockpile evil as though you're going to get a prize. Read that thing again. Come on, the definition. The definition of grudge, a persistent feeling of ill will or resentment. Stop right there. A persistent feeling of ill will, meaning what? Malicious intent. Meaning what? You have a persistent feeling of maliciousness in you. You understand? Meaning you are ready to kill. You understand? You're not going to listen to reason and so forth. You understand? It says a persistent feeling of ill will or resentment resulting from a past insult or injury because everything is offensive to you. That's why it says past insult or injury because everything, whenever you're corrected, you take it personal. You are corrected, you, you hold a grudge. You are corrected, you guess what? You develop the spirit of, 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 of anger, the spirit of hatred. You understand? A grudge. That's what you do. You harbor those evil thoughts. Okay? Now, read the second definition. Read that. Verb. Be respectfully. No, no. Be, be resentfully. Come on. Be resentfully unwilling to give or allow something. You see that thing? Be resentfully meaning what? Be resentfully unwilling to give or allow something. Counsel goes out, the brother is arguing. What the hell is this? You know what? Mm -hmm. And envy. And the envy, we are not talking about the end because the root of envy is what? Bitterness. The root, the root of bitterness is what? Hatred. The root of hatred is what? Being offended. Because the capital that goes out will multiply bitterness in your spirit. You understand? That right there, that's simple activity. Right there. Okay, next definition. Read that for me. Come on. Feel resentful that someone mm -hmm. has achieved something. You see that thing? Yes, that's another one. So a brother's success activates your the activates the demon in you because you don't want the brother to succeed. You don't want the brother to, to progress. You like it when your brother is struggling. You like it when your brother is not growing. You are happy because you are not growing. So therefore, you don't want your brother to grow either. You see this thing? This is a rampant spirit in Israel. Okay, watch this. Now, let's go to Genesis now. Okay, now that we went over there, let's go to Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Now, this is Cain and Abel, okay? Watch this. Genesis 4, verse 1. Let's start there. Read what you got. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. And Adam knew his wife Eve, mm -hmm. and she conceived and bare Cain and said, Wait. I have gotten a man from the Lord. I have gotten a man from the Lord. Read on, because Cain was the firstborn. Come on. And she bare, and she again bare his brother Abel. Mm -hmm. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So everybody had responsibility. So Abel's job was, was what? He was a shepherd. And Cain was a farmer. He was a tiller of the ground. These were these are the responsibility, division of labor in the house. Because the parents gave them jobs. Your job is to be a shepherd, look after the flock. Your job, Cain, is to look after the ground. You understand? You're going to be a farmer. These are chores, responsibilities. Watch this. Jump down to verse, read verse three now. Verse three. Yeah. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. So now this is over time now. Cain is as he brought the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. Now, this goes, this is offerings now that must be given to the Most High. So Cain, he brought... He, what did he bring? He brought, the, he brought the fruit of the ground as an offering unto the Lord. That's not what the Most High God commanded us in order for us to atone for our sins. Blood had to be spilled for that to happen. Jump down to verse 5. Watch this. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. He had not respect. Come on. And Cain was very wroth, and mm. his countenance fell. So now, because the Most High rejected Cain's offering because that was not the right offering as per what the parents taught them. 
The proof of that, Genesis 3, okay, Genesis 3 verse 21. Because the law of animal sacrifice, this is when it was introduced after Adam and Eve had sinned, okay? And what did the parents do, Adam and Eve? They taught the kids, Cain and Abel, okay? So when it's time for offering unto the Lord, Cain decided, I'm not going to obey my father and my mother. I'm going to disobey them and do my own thing. Genesis 3 verse 21, come on. Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. Go ahead. And to Adam also and to his wife, did the so, Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them? You see that thing? He made coats of skin and clothed them. This is when the Lord introduced animal sacrifice after Adam and Eve had sinned. The coats of skin, you understand, is going to what? The coats of skins of what? Animals. When animals were slaughtered, you understand, it goes into that and clothe them. He clothed them with what? He clothed them with righteousness because that's how they receive atonement for their sins. Okay, give me that in Psalms 132 verse 9. Psalms 132 verse 9. Let's read that. Psalms chapter 132 verse 9. Read. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, uh -huh. and let thy saints shout for joy. You see that thing? Your priests must be clothed with righteousness, and thy, thy saints shout for joy. So Adam and Eve was clothed with righteousness. What is righteousness? Deuteronomy 6.25, get that? Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Read. Right. And it shall be our righteousness mm -hmm. if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he had commanded us. So now righteousness is the keeping of God's commandments. So Adam and Eve was clothed with righteousness. How? They were clothed with righteousness because animal sacrifice was introduced. The blood of the calf and the goat was spilled in order for them to receive atonement for their sins. So let's go back to Genesis 3 verse 21 now again. Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. Come on. And to Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. So he taught them animal sacrifice, how to atone for your sins. So that likewise, they taught the parents, they taught the kids. Their parents taught their sons, you understand? They taught their children. So go back to Genesis 4 now, Genesis 4 verse 5. You know what, read verse 3, then we're going to jump down to verse 5. Genesis 4 verse 3 again. Genesis chapter 4 verse 3. Come on. And in process of time, it came to pass uh -huh. that Cain brought of the fruits of the ground an offering unto the Lord. So that's the first mistake right there. He decided, I'm going to do my own thing. You understand? I'm going to do my own thing. Give me that in Jude real quick. They were, he, the parents, they taught them. Cain decided, no, I'm going to go the hell off. Give me that in Jude. Jude verse 19. Okay. The book you of know, Jude. Start of verse 18. Start of verse 18. The book of Jude verse 18. From but beloved, remember ye the words Verse 18, how that they told you they should be mockers in the last time, mm -hmm. who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. He says they will be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. Mm -hmm. Mockers is those that hate God's commandments, you understand? It's just so they can walk after their own ungodly lusts, because that's what Cain did. He did not follow the command of the parents, he followed after his own ungodly lust. When he did that, what did he do? Read the next verse. Go ahead. Verse 19. They uh -huh. please be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. These be they who separate themselves. So Cain separated himself from the counsel that he was given by his parents. You understand? Adam and Eve. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, emotional, Okay, they hold grudges, having not the spirit, meaning what? They don't have sense. They have no sense. They don't have the spirit. They got no sense. You understand? And guess what? They're going to do their own thing regardless of what you tell them. Now go back to where he was at now. Genesis chapter 4 now. Read verse 5. Genesis chapter 4 verse 5. Come on. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. 
Mm-hmm. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So the Lord did not have respect on Cain's offering because Cain decided to do his own thing. He did not follow the counsel that his parents taught him. But he says, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Guess what? So Cain was angry. Because now you really need to think, think about this thing. You are given a command, right? Do X, Y, and Z. You don't do it. The person that gave you the command is unhappy with you. You become angry because you are checked. What is that called? That's called an emotional Negro. Okay? That's an emotional green monster right there. Because it doesn't make any sense. How do you, you are given a command, you don't do it according to the way you were instructed, and when you are corrected about it, you get upset. Because that's what happened to Cain here. The devil jumped on him because Cain was what? Cain was emotional. He was emotionally unstable. He did not, he was senseless. Because only someone who does not have sense, they will get upset at this point. You understand? That's why it says, and his countenance fell. Now he's changing his face now. He's changing his facial expression now. You understand? Some of you brothers do that when correction comes up. Okay? Stay in spirit. Watch this. Give me Watch this. Mm. There's a scripture in Sirach, okay? Yes, give me that in Sirach chapter 13. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 13 and verse, verse 25. Sirach 13, 25. Let's read that. Because it says his countenance, you understand? His countenance falling. He changed his face, okay? Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 13, verse 25. Right. The heart of a man changes his countenance, whether it be for good or for e- or evil. And a merry heart make it a cheerful countenance. You see that thing? So obviously Cain's countenance was not cheerful. Okay. His countenance was not cheerful. It says the heart of a man changes his countenance, whether it be for good or evil. So Cain's countenance was not cheerful because he was mad. He was upset and his anger was not justified. You understand? His anger wasn't justified. Not at all. That's why he was upset. And guess what? The, the, the level of anger that he had, it caused him to kill his brother. You understand? Think about that thing. That's heavy right there, right? Now let's go back. Go back to where was that now? Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4 and verse, verse 5 again. Genesis 4 verse 5. Read that. Genesis chapter 4 verse 5. Read. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain mm-hmm. was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So Cain was upset. He was mad as hell. He was unhappy. But he was, he was unhappy for something that... He was told to do, and he did not do it according. Go ahead. And the Lord said again, mm. why art thou wrath? Mm. And why is thy countenance fallen? Why are you mad? Why are you angry? Okay. He says, why? He says, what? He says, and the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wrath? What are you mad for? And why is thy countenance fallen? Because we read his countenance was not cheerful. You understand? His countenance was was a, a countenance of a man that is mad as hell. And he was really mad at, at himself. He wasn't mad at the Lord. You understand? He was angry at himself, but he took out his anger on his breath. You understand? So Cain was irrational. He was irrational and he was emotionally unstable. That was his problem. Go ahead, verse 7. Verse 7. If mm-hmm. thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? If you do where if you do what I told you, if you offer according to how I commanded you, I, am I not going to accept you? So the Lord is telling Cain, I'm going to accept you if you do exactly what I tell you to do. Go ahead. And if thou doest not well, mm. sin lieth at the door. Sin lieth at the door, read. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So unto, unto Cain, Satan shall be his desire. So his, his, Cain's desire will be to serve the devil. 
You understand? And it says, and he shall rule over him. The devil will rule over Cain. Why? Because Cain did not want to follow the counsel. He did not want to follow the command. Watch this. Give me that in Psalms, okay? Give me Psalms 109 verse 6. This is what happened. This is what we are explaining. What This is what um, Moses is explaining in Genesis 4 and verse 7. He says, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Watch this. Psalms 109 verse 6. Psalms 109 verse 6. Come on. Sit thou a wicked man over him, mm -hmm. and let Satan stand at his right hand. And let what? And let Satan stand at his right hand and let satan stand at his right hand so guess what satan was at the right hand of cain satan was ruling over cain because cain had the spirit of resistance towards what towards command give me that in zechariah 3 verse 1 zechariah chapter 3 verse 1 zechariah chapter 3 verse 1 and he showed me, and he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing mm. before the angel of the Lord, and Wait. Satan standing at his right hand to resist it. That's the reason why Cain was resistant. Cain was resistant because his desire was to save, was to serve the devil. You understand? Whenever you have the spirit of resistance to change, that means Satan is at your right hand. Because that's what happened to Cain. So remember, Cain's, as Cain's envy, jealousy, and anger is growing. But let me not jump ahead. Go back to Genesis 4. Read verse 7 again. Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. Read. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? Uh -huh. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Read. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou Read. shalt rule over him. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him, and Satan will rule over Cain. Now watch this. Jump up to verse 4. Genesis 4, verse 4 now. Remember, now the Lord, okay, Cain, he did not want to do what the Most High God commanded him, because he separated himself, because he was emotional. Now read verse 4. Watch this. Genesis chapter 4, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And Abel... He also brought of the firstlings of his flock mm -hmm. and of the fat thereof. Right. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. You see what our forefather Abel did? He says he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Because Abel, our forefather, he was moving according to how he was commanded. You understand? For atonement of your sins, this is what you have to do. It, blood has to be spilled. So when you bring oranges, when you bring bananas, you bring cucumbers and lettuce, where's the blood going to come from? You understand? Because Cain was very self-willed. Okay? He was self-willed. He did not have the spirit. But the spirit that he did have was the spirit of Satan. Okay? Read that again. Verse 4. Genesis chapter 4 verse 4. Read. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and mm -hmm. of the fat thereof. Come on. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So now watch this. Give me that in Numbers chapter 18, verse 17. Okay. Let's see what, Kate, what, what, what Abel did here. Let's read about that in Numbers 18. Okay. Numbers chapter 18, verse 17. Let's read that. Numbers chapter 18, verse 17. Go ahead. But the firstling of a cow, or the mm -hmm. firstling of a sheep, of or the what? firstling of a, of a sheep. You see, you see that? Is a, but the firstlings of a cow, or the firstlings of a sheep. Okay, that's the flocks. Read on. Or the firstling of a goat. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not redeem. Go ahead. They are holy. Thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar mm -hmm. and shalt burn their fat for an offering made by thou fire. Shalt, thou shalt what? And shalt burn their fat for an offering made by fire. 
He says, he says, and shall bend their fat for an offering made by fire. That's what we read in Genesis. He says, what? He says, and Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Read. For a sweet savor unto the Lord. For a sweet savor unto the Lord, because that's how it was done. This is the law of animal sacrifice, which was introduced in Genesis, the third chapter to Adam and Eve after they had sinned. Now Cain and Abel has to do the same thing to receive atonement, not lettuce and cucumbers and bananas, which is what he brought. Okay, now go back to Genesis 4. Okay, Genesis chapter 4, verse 4 again. Genesis chapter 4, verse 4. Read. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock mm -hmm. and of the fat thereof. Come and on. the Lord had respect to Abel and his offering. Because the Abel's offering was it became a sweet savor unto the law. Read on. Come on. But Cain and but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. Mm -hmm. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Come on. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? So you see in verse 4, the, the verse ends in, in a colon. To list that there is that to list the things that activated Cain's anger. The things that activated Cain's anger is in verse 4. Read verse 4 again. Genesis chapter 4, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Come on. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Now, read that. You see, there's a colon there. It's going to list the things. You understand? That's going to, that activated Cain's anger, his jealousy. You understand? His envy. Read. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. Mm -hmm. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So the Most High God was happy with Abel's offering. And because he was happy with Abel's offering and he did not respect Cain's offering, guess what? Cain took out his anger and envy and hatred towards his brother. You understand? Because his brother's offering, the Lord had respect unto it. Okay, come on. If thou doest well, shalt mm -hmm. thou not be accepted? If Hold on. If thou doest well, like who? Like your brother in verse 4. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted like I accepted your brother? Because your brother did well. You see that thing? Read. And if thou doest not well, sin mm. lieth at the door. Now you're in the midst of sin. You're breaking the law, the law of how you're supposed to sacrifice and what you're supposed to sacrifice. Read on. And unto thee shall be his desire, mm -hmm. and thou shalt rule over him. So okay, the Satan will rule over Cain because Cain had the spirit of resistance, the spirit of envy, anger, and jealousy, and hatred. That was his fuel. You understand? He fed on that thing. Okay? Read on. Verse 8. Verse 8. And mm. Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against his brother, against Abel, his brother, and slew him. So now, what I want you to see here is Cain spoke, Cain talked with his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against his Abel, his brother, and slew him. So from, from having anger, jealousy, envy, hatred, you see what was, it escalated into what? Murder, because anger, anger, envy, and hatred, and jealousy, those are the spirit, or that's a murderous spirit. You have a murderous mindset. You understand? When you have those spirits in you, you have a murderous mindset. That means you are a murderer. You just have not acted on your, you're not, you have not physically acted on it, but it's consuming you in your spirit. It's there in your spirit. That means one thing, something that will, be, you just need proper conditions to activate it and you will act on it now, but it's in your spirit. You understand? Because, and because you are stockpiling it, guess what? It will take something small to activate it. Then you're going to blow up like the world trade. Okay. And you'll blow up on your brother. You'll blow up, blow up on your sister. You're going to kill your sister or your brother. Or you punch him in the face. 
Because guess what? You'll be, hold, you'll be holding it in. You see that? Watch this. Give me the book of 1 John 3, verse 10. 1 John 3, verse 10. Okay. Hmm. Hold on a second. He says, and Cain talked with Abel, his brother. Hmm. Let me, okay, let me go into it so we understand the reason why he ended up killing his brother. We know he was already activated because his works was evil, his brothers was righteous. Okay, give me that in Matthew, okay? Give me Matthew. Because remember, Abel was a prophet. Matthew chapter 23, read verse 30. Matthew chapter 23, verse 30. Go ahead. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. You see that thing? The partakers with them in the blood of the prophets because our forefathers, they killed the prophets that were sent out. They put the prophets to death. You understand? So Christ is talking about those are our forefathers that killed the prophets that the Lord sent in his spirit. Watch this. Give me that in 2nd Ezra 1. Okay. 2nd Ezra chapter 1, verse 32. Watch this. Second is chapter one, verse 32. Come on. Embrace the age. Second is chapter one, verse 32. I sent unto you my servants, the prophets, whom ye have taken and slain and hey. torn their bodies in pieces, mm. whose blood I will require at your, of your hands, saith the Lord. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, I sent you prophets and prophet servants and my servants, the prophets, and you kill them. So the Lord says, I'm on whose blood I will require of your hands, saith the Lord. Meaning you're going to pay for that. You understand? So when we go to the streets, our people just be cursing us out. Our people calling us names and so forth. Guess what? That's another way of what? Of also killing the prophets. Because that's hatred what they are doing, which is murder. Okay, so go back to where was that? Matthew 23, verse 30 again. Matthew chapter 23, verse 30. Mm -hmm. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Next verse, come on. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves, mm -hmm. that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. So remember, this is during the time of Rome. Christ is, is, is saying this. So the same people that was during the time of Rome, guess what? Is the same spirits that are back today in these last days. Because we are, we are now under the extension of ancient Rome, which is America, Babylon the Great. He says, wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourself, unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which kill the prophets. So the, when you go, when we go to the streets and teach our people, guess what? You always have those wicked black Asian Negroes who despise the sight of seeing us. They are the children of those that kill the prophets. Understand that? Jump down to verse 35. Verse 35. Mm -hmm. That upon you may come that all the righteous what? blood. Hold on. That upon what? That upon you. That upon you, you who the same people that he was talking to during the time of Rome is the same people that we are talking about today. That Christ was talking, he was talking to the same people that we talk about today when we go and teach. They are they, these are the same people. You understand? He says that upon you, come on. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. From the blood of the righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. You see that part right there? It says, it says, may come all the righteous bloodshed upon the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, okay, son of Barachias. But what I'm, what I'm showing you here is when Cain was killed, Cain was a prophet, you understand? And prophets, they prophesy, okay? They teach the commandments of the Mosai. So now, read the next verse, verse 36, read. Verse 36, verily I say unto you, 
Mm. All these things shall come upon this generation. All these things shall come upon this generation, the generation of 2021, these last days, the generation of these last days, all the righteous bloodshed from the time of uh, when Abel was killed unto this day. It says these people that despise the gospel this day, they are the same people that killed the prophets from the time of Abel unto this day because they hated the prophets of the Most High. You understand? So now Abel was killed. You understand? Abel was a prophet. Prophets, they prophesy. Okay. Now, let's go back to Genesis 4 now, verse 8. Because I went over this some time back. So for those of you who are new, okay, take notes. Genesis 4, verse 8, read that. Genesis chapter 4, verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. Okay, and it then. came to pass. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. What did he talk to Abel? What, did, what were they talking about? Remember, Abel was a prophet. So based on the event that had taken place, that means Cain, obviously, he was still, he was still mad. And Abel talked to him about, well, listen, get your mind right, bro. Get your mind right. Be right with the Lord and honor your parents. Okay? Cain did not want to do that. So over time, as Cain, as Abel is what? Is, 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 He's showing his brothers, and listen, get yourself right so you can be right with the Lord. That made him angry even more. That fueled his anger, okay, towards his brother. He started to develop the spirit of resentment towards his brother. Hmm. So don't leave it back then. Bring it to today, okay? Because if you leave it back then, you will miss the whole thing. Because today you find that a brother might check you in the truth, you say, because hmm, you know how black people, black people are. Black people don't want to be held accountable. Black people don't want to take correction. Black people don't want to be told when they are wrong. You understand? So guess what? That, that in them develops the spirit of anger, envy, and hatred. You understand? And it's very subtle. But brothers be hiding it very well. You have anger and envy against your brother. But you don't want to, you don't want to actually fast. You don't want to apply yourself. You don't want to follow the counsel so you can get rid of that thing. Okay. Why? Because what we're reading here, the more they're going to apply the command, because they're going to talk to you about the scripts. If they don't, if because some brothers they hate it when other brothers talk to them about the scripts. Wow, you're always in the scripts. But is he going against the scriptures? No. He's 100 percent in the spirit. Some of you brothers, you don't like that. Is the bearing some stone unto you? When other brothers around you, they're always in the scripts, it aggravates your, your spirit because you are a wicked Negro hiding down there. Okay? And that's exactly what happened to Cain. That's why he killed his brother. Go ahead. And it came to pass, Read. Come on, Genesis 4. Genesis chapter 4, verse 8. And Cain talked with, his with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. You see that thing? Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Why? First John 3, verse 10. Let's read that. Give me that in First John chapter 3 and verse 10. First John chapter 3, verse 10. Go ahead. In this, the children of God are manifest. Mm -hmm. And the children of the devil. Right? Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Mm -hmm. Neither he that loveth, neither he that loveth not his brother. So if you don't love your brother, you are of the devil. You are of your father, the devil. Go ahead. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, mm -hmm. that ye should love one another. That you should love one another. So this message, we had it from the beginning that we must love each other according to the scriptures. Teach each other God's commandments. Hold each other accountable according to the laws of God. Read on. That we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was uh, of that we, Not as Cain. So this whole thing is explaining the, the relationship that Cain and Abel had. You understand? And the hatred that Cain had for his brother. 
not as Cain, because Cain did not love his brother. You understand? Cain did not want to do righteousness, right? Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one? Who was of that wicked one? Remember, it says, unto thee shall be his desire, and he shall rule over thee. That's what we're reading it. It says, Cain was of that wicked one. It's not talking about Adam and Eve. Okay, it's talking about the devil in Genesis 4 verse 7. Go ahead. And slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Why did because he kill he... his brother? Why did he kill his brother? Really? Because his own works were evil. Mm -hmm. And his brother's righteous. So why would you, you see that? The reason why Cain was so upset and ang angry, at his angry, like the way that he was, it is because he was, he says, he was, he says, because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. You see, this is an example of lack of sense. How do you get angry at your brother for doing according to doing well? You understand? And you are doing not well, but you're angry at your brother instead of examining yourself. Because what Cain was supposed to do was what? Examine himself. Some of you, you hate your brother for no reason. Instead of examining yourself, your, your, your lack of self-examination fuels your, your hatred towards your brother. Let me say that again. Your lack of self-examination fuels your anger, your envy, your hatred, your, understand, your bitterness towards your brother. So all these things, all these evil things that come out of you that defile your, that defile your mind is what is fueling you to continue the hatred for your brother. That's why it says persistent ill will, persistent feelings of ill will. That's what we were reading the definition. You see that? Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon, okay? Wisdom of Solomon 10 verse 3. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 3. Go ahead. But when the unrighteous went away from her in his anger, mm -hmm. he... He perished also in the fury wherewith he murdered his brother. Let's talk about Cain. Cain was the unrighteous that went away from him. The hair is wisdom, okay? In verse 1. It's in his anger because he was angry at his brother because his works was, was righteous and his was evil. Give me that in Matthew chapter 20, verse 15. Matthew chapter 20, verse 15. Matthew chapter 20, verse 15. Go ahead. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Mm -hmm. Is thine eye evil because I am good? You see that? Is your eye evil because your brother's works are, are righteous? Because that's what happened to Cain. Cain had an evil eye towards his brother because his works was righteous. Instead of examining himself, he decided to what I'm gonna stockpile evil, and this is gonna be my fuel and my power to motivate me to kill my brother. And that's exactly what I, that's why he killed his own brother because of that thing. Okay, watch this. Give me, give me the book of first Samuel. Hmm, before we get Samuel, watch this. Give me the book of Psalms. Give me Psalms 106, verse 16. Watch this. Psalms 106. I'm going to deal with 1 Samuel in a second. Psalms 106, okay, verse 16. Read that. Psalms 106, verse 16. Read. They envied Moses also in the camp. Mm -hmm. And Aaron, the saint of the Lord. So you see what happened during the time on during um, when we was in the wilderness? Read that again, verse 16. So we, we need to dig into this a little bit, okay? Psalms chapter 106, verse 16. They what? envied Moses also in the camp. Uh -huh. And Herod, the saints of the Lord. So they, they, they envied Moses in the camp. Read on. The earth opened and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abraham. So now, the reason why there was so much commotion in the camp during the time in number 16 was because of envy. 
So Dathan, Korah, is it Dathan, um, Korah and Abiram, what was their problem? Their problem was envy. But the way they pushed it in the camp, they disguised it. And I'll show you how they did it. Okay. Keep reading. Verse 18. I'm going to show you how those wicked Negroes did that thing. Read. Verse 18. And mm -hmm. a fire was kindled in their company. Read. The flame burned up the wicked. And he says, and a fire was kindled in their company and the flame burned up the wicked because they was wicked as hell. The Lord judged them. The Lord did not reward them for that evil that they did. Meaning what? When you have the spirit of envy, the Lord is going to reward you. He's going to what? He's going to burn coals of fire upon your head. Because that's what happened to Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. The Lord did not reward them in a, in a positive way. The Lord rewarded them in a negative way. You understand? Watch this. Give me number 16, verse 1. I'm going to show you how, how they did it. Because it says, they envied Moses also in the camp and Aaron, the saints of the Lord. How, how did that happen? How did they? Because yeah, in Numbers, it doesn't, didn't say envy. Watch this. Number 16, start of verse 1. I'm going to show you how they did it. Numbers chapter 16, verse 1. Go ahead. Now Korah, the son of Ezer, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Pileth, sons of Reuben, took men. So these are sons of Reuben, the sons of Levi. Okay, come on, they took men. So they had what? They had groupies. Yeah, today it's called groupies. They had groupies. You understand? Dathan, Abiram, uh, Dathan, Abiram, okay. Guess what they did? Korah, Dathan, they had groupies in the camp. Keep going. Watch this now. Go ahead. And they rose up before Moses mm -hmm. with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. So now these were, these were men that had certain positions in the camp. It says, children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. What did Every they say? Every one of them. Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. Mm -hmm. Every one of them. So you see, you see that part, it says, seeing all the congregation are holy. Every one of them. Now, and the Lord is among them. Now, I want to show you something with this. So you have to sit down and really think, meditate on this thing. It says, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. So when it says, it says you're taking too much on yourself. You understand? Seeing all the congregation. Are, so they are coming with, we want to help. You, you see that? They come with that spirit of, we want to help, but they feign themselves just men, like we read in Luke 20, verse 20. Okay? They feign themselves just men. He says, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them. You understand? So he did, it doesn't say envy, but the way they brought it to Aaron, you understand, and Moses was that all the congregation is holy, everybody's good, everybody's in the spirit and so forth. So what are, they, what are they trying to push? They are trying to make Moses and Aaron to let their guard down so that Moses does not see really what they are about. You see that? That's what they were doing right here. But the spirit that was working behind was the spirit of envy. That was the spirit. But they disguised it. They didn't come on straight. They came with compliments. Okay, watch this. I'm going to show you this thing. I need you men to pay attention here. Sisters as well, by the way. Give me that in uh, Sirach 12, okay? Sirach chapter 12 and verse 16. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 16. Okay. An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lip. You see what you see that? So Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, that's what they did. 
they spoke sweetly towards Moses and Aaron. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 16. Read. An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit. Stop right there. So an enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his mind, because he's planning evil, he says he imagined how to throw thee into a pit. Because that's what they were doing. They were trying to overthrow Moses and Aaron. And guess what? They say, see, all the congregation is holy because they were they managed to get groupies in the camp to follow them secretly. You understand? They enticed them. They managed to convince them because they were simple tents. Okay? So now he's saying, he imagined how to throw thee into a pit because that's what Korah, Dathan, and Abiram was doing. Their plan was to overthrow the congregation of Moses and Aaron. That was their plan. They were envious of their own people. They didn't want their people to progress. Okay, read. He will, he will weep with his eyes, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. That's exactly what they did. When they found opportunity, what was the opportunity they found? Because remember, they said, seeing all the congregation is holy, every one of them and the Lord is among them. How did they know? How, how did they know that everyone is holy? How did they know? Because they were talking to everyone in the camp to get people behind them. So that when they have the multitude, now they're going to come to Moses, you understand, with that multitude to what? To put Moses in fear. That's what they was doing. You understand? That's what, we're, that's what we're reading here. Keep reading. He will shake his head and clap the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 17. If adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. If you and find yourself in trouble, hold on. You find yourself in trouble, he'll be the first one on the scene. Go ahead. And though he pretend to help thee, Mm -hmm. yet shall he undermine thee. Now that's a heavy thing right there. That's a heavy right there. He says, and though he pretend to help thee, yet shall he undermine thee. That's why a lot of the times, like now I'll talk to you brothers, because I can pick up the spirit of brothers, you know, trying to second guess. I can pick you up. I know who you is. You better get your mind right. Okay. Because I've seen this before. Where they at? They are not in the truth now. Back in the world, okay? Because they thought they knew something. They thought they were somewhere. This is the one thing that happens in black people, among black people. Black people, they are the strangest people on earth, right? As a people, you go to Isha's plantation. When you get there, you are like a small mouse at the corner there. Isha will give you things to do, how to do it. And the reason why they want you to do it the way they want you to do it is because if you go outside of the bounds of what they are showing you, guess what? You're going to be a threat. You pose a threat to the organization, Some everything they, what they built. So when you come in Israel, you think you can do the same thing. You come in Israel, you think you can do whatever you want. But when you're in Israel's plantation, you don't think, you don't find yourself doing whatever you want. Which organization, which country, you understand? Which system, which government, you can just waltz in and do whatever you want. It doesn't exist. There's no place on this earth you can just walk in and do whatever the hell you want. But in Israel, you think you can do that. And that's what was going on here with Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Because it says, though he pretend to help thee, so he doesn't really want to help, but they pretend to help you. Yet shall he undermine you. The undermine you goes into a second guess. You say something, they say something different. You say one thing, they say something different. That's a Negro right there. Because they think they are on some level. If they shoot fit, you better put it on. Guess what? And repent from that demon. Because the day when I'm going to come for you, I'm going to check you. Now the scriptures are coming out. You are given an opportunity to what? Let me sit down and deal with this. Some of you, you will not do it. You understand? And you are going to be surprised the day when I'm saying, bruh, you need to check this thing because the reason why this is happening is because of X, Y, and Z. 
with these classes that have been coming up, what have you been doing? Nothing. Have you been applying this? No. Why aren't you seeking counsel? I don't know. I'm not sure. So therefore, now you pose a threat to what we're trying to build. Listen, you are going to be squashed like a bug in the spirit of Christ. Spiritual, not physical. We're not going to do nothing to you physically. But spiritually, yes. Why? Because you pull the, pull the threat to everything we're trying to build. You understand? Because of, look at the conditions of our people. And you still have the nerve to come in Israel to want to hinder the progress, but you don't hinder Israel's progress. You understand? Read that again, verse 17. I want to hone in on this thing. Read again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 17. If adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. And though he pretend to help thee, yet shall he undermine thee. You see that? Yet shall he undermine thee. And this right here, it's, I see that spirit in Israel. You understand? I see that spirit in Israel. Because you are a nig. Okay? Nigs. This is, this is how nigs move. They move like this. You understand? So you pose a threat to this Bible. You are an enemy to this Bible. Guess what? You become an enemy as well. Because prisoners will not be taken when it comes to this thing. Understand that. Okay. So now, watch this. Let's go back. Go back to Numbers. Okay. Numbers chapter 16, verse 3. Read it. Numbers 16, verse 3. Come on. The book of Numbers, chapter 16, verses 3. Read. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron Read. and said unto them, Read. Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Read. Lord is among them. Read. Wherefore, then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. So now they are saying, listen, now you are setting yourself up above the congregation of the Lord. You think, you, you think you're better than us. That's, that's the mindset of the Negro. Meaning what? Who are you that is, who, who, who put you in authority over us? Because that's what they're saying. But guess what? They came in, he says, you see, you're taking too much. We want to help you. That's the mindset. Seeing all the congregation is only, meaning everybody's the same. Everybody's on the same level because that's what they were thinking. And guess what? Let me hit you with something. Brothers that are be window shopping, brothers that be Googling YouTube and all of that, they, but they don't apply the scripts. Guess what? They fall in this category too. And I'll show you, I'm, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. You see that part when it says, you take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Because brothers that window shop, you know what they do? They go outside the window shop, right? They learn a couple of precepts. And then they come in. Then is Q&A, because we have Q&As, right? Don't think I cannot spot you, but you think you can fool the prophets. Because there are certain questions that I'll be thinking to myself. This brother does not even know what it means to say, um, honor your father, your mother. He does not even know what it means, thou shalt not commit adultery. But the line of questioning is questioning, I'm like, what you are asking does not, is not proportional to where you're at. The type of questions you are asking, they are not proportional to where you are spiritually. You understand? The basic things, you, are, you cannot put a timetable together and follow it, but you're going to try to be deep. So that's what we're reading here because you know what that spirit, watch this, I'm going to show you that spirit where it comes from because here's what they are trying to do. I'm going to show you some. Give me that thing, Nehemiah, okay? Because Nehemiah, he spotted that thing from a mile out, okay? Watch this. Give me Nehemiah, okay? Give me Nehemiah chapter six. I'm gonna show you what they were trying to do. What the, the spirit behind it. Nehemiah chapter six, verse nine. Watch this. You know what? Start of a seven. Start of a seven. Watch this. The book of Nehemiah chapter six, verse seven. Read. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of the at Jerusalem saying, mm -hmm. there is a king in Judah and now 
shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us counsel together. So now what they are trying to do is they are, they are speaking lies to put Nehemiah in fear. You understand? Because Nehemiah was building. That's what we are doing this day, rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, right? Keep reading. Then I sent unto him, say, there are no such things done as thou sayest, but mm. thou faintest then, thou faintest them out of thine own heart. Because the imaginations of men. So he says, he's making these things up. You understand? He says, but thou faintest them out of thine own mind. Why? Keep reading. Next verse. Come on. For they all made us afraid. Mm -hmm. You see that? Because they all made us afraid. Because I'm gonna cause there's a brother. There's 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 another brother that also comes in. They come in, they 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 they, they attend the class and then they don't attend the class. When this class starts to get hot, because I've noticed the trend. When this class starts to get hot, they drop off the call. I've noticed that. They win the shop as well. You understand? So brothers will come in, okay? And because they window shop, when they come in, they think that because they window shop, they're going to put us in fear so that we don't teach the Bible the way that is written. Because guess what? I also know because I watch YouTube. I do this. So I know whatever you say, I've heard it before. That's the mindset. That's what the Korah, Dathan, and Abiram was doing. They were saying that to Moses. You understand? They were saying that to Moses and Aaron to try to put Moses and Aaron in fear. Or fear of what? Fear to teach. Fear to rebuke. Because that's the big one. Fear to teach the laws of God. Fear to rebuke. Fear to correct. Fear to set things in order. You understand? That's why they win the shop. Window shoppers, that's what they are trying to do. You, you see what I'm saying? Keep reading. Verse 9 again. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 6, verse 9. For they Wait. all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work that it that? be not done. The work is as their hands shall be weakened from the work that it be not done. That's the whole agenda. The whole agenda is to stop the work. Understand that. So I need you men to really wake the hell up, okay? And sisters too, their whole agenda is to what? Is to stop the work, is to stop us from doing the work. That same wicked, demonic, abominable Negroes back then, they are back today. They are ashy as hell this day. Keep going. That it be not done. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, oh God, strengthen my hands. What did he say? Now therefore, oh God, strengthen my hands. You're not going to stop this, Negro. Understand that. Now, therefore, oh God, strengthen my hands. That's the spirit that our forefather Nehemiah had. You understand? That's the spirit we got. So if you think you're going to be going out there, coming in, walk, you know, in window shopping, we have the q and The q and A's is to edify. The q and A's is that you do, you, you study, you have genuine questions, you understand? But I can see in the spirit that this question that you are asking is too obvious. But because you are so deep into your evil, you don't even see that. That's what Nehemiah, Nehemiah is like, strengthen my hand. Well, that's the spirit, that's the prayer on a daily basis, by the way. Don't get it twisted. You're not going to put me in fear. Understand that the mission is a goal. Me, I'm only interested in those brothers and sisters that are genuine in this truth. And they want to, they are here because they want to help. They want to help us build. And we will build together in the spirit of Christ. Any Negro who's thinking otherwise, you're going to be what? We're going to roll over you. Understand that. Understand that thing. Go back to where was it? Go back to, um, go back to Numbers, okay? Go back to Numbers. Go back to Numbers 16, verse 3. The book of Numbers, chapter 16, verse 3. Read. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron mm -hmm. and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then lift ye yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. He says, Then lift ye up yourself above the congregation. Because they were saying, Listen, you think you're better. 
who said you are? The hell is this? That's what they are. That was the mindset. But the whole thing was about envy. But they disguised it as what? We want to help also. We want to help. We want to do the work. They are thinking themselves just men. But they don't give a damn about their people. They only care about how many precepts they can bring up. You, you see what I'm saying? How sound they, how deep they can sound. You don't see the bigger picture. You understand? You don't see the big picture. Sit in some corner somewhere and be quiet. Okay? We, we men, we have work to do. Me, I don't have time to entertain those type of things. I will shut it down. Because why? Because we've got too much work to do. It's too important to allow anybody to mess this up. You understand? We come a long way. Understand that thing. Through blood, sweat, and tears. Pain that we've gone through to get to this far. Don't nobody going to just come in and mess stuff up. No, that's not going to happen. Because black people, you are, black people are conditioned and they are conditioned to destroy from within by default. Okay? So, but we will use the scriptures to what? To shut that thing down. Give me that in Matthew 16 verse 18. Because Christ said this thing. Okay, Christ said this thing right here. Matthew 16 verse 18. Read that thing. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 18. And I say also unto thee, Ray. that thou art Peter, mm -hmm. and upon this rock I will build my church, Ray. and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You see, the, the mission is a goal. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The mission is a goal. Understand that. Watch this. Give me Sarah 45 verse 18. Ecclesiastic as 45. You know what? Go back to Psalms 106. Psalms 106 verse 18. Then we're going to jump to verse 23. Psalms 106 verse 18. Read that for me. The book of Psalms, chapter 106, verses 18. Read. And a fire was kindled in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. The, the wicked Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, and all the people that followed him, those bums that followed him. Jump down to verse 28. The book of Psalms, chapter 106, verses 28. No, no, verse 23, verse 23, verse 23. The book of Psalms, chapter 106, verse 23. Go Therefore, ahead. he said that he would destroy them. Mm -hmm. Had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, lest he should destroy them. You see that thing? It says, therefore he said that he would de destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach? Because the Moses, the Lord told Moses, listen, step aside, let me kill all of them. I'll start a new nation with you, Moses. That's how mad the Moses God, or he was mad as hell. And Moses still defended the 12 tribes of Israel, still defended us. Guess what? We still pray. We still pray for the congregation, brothers to get their mind right, sisters to get their mind right. You understand? But don't think for a second, your behavior is going to stop this motion. Then listen. Hmm. Give me that wisdom of Solomon. Woo. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, 24. Read that for me. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verses 24. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. Mm. He passeth and goeth through all things by reason of a pureness. You see what the Bible is saying? Wisdom is a movement. So you're not going to stop this thing. Wisdom is a movement. Jump down to verse 30. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 30. Mm. For after this cometh night. Come on. But vice shall not prevail against wisdom. What is vice? Vice is, is evil, malicious intent. You understand? It says, but for, it says, for after this cometh night, but vice shall not prevail against wisdom. It will not. This is not an opinion. This is a fact. Okay? Go back to, uh, now give me Sarah 45 verse 18. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 45 verse 18. By the way, we're still dealing with envy. All the scriptures that we went over, Korah, Dathan, Abiram, we, that's, we're still dealing with envy. Don't lose the thought. Read that. Sarah 45, verse 18. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 45, verse 18. Go ahead. Strangers conspired together against him. Read. 
and maligned him in the wilderness, even the men that were of Tathans and Abiron's side, and the congregation of Korah with fury and wrath. Because the Lord, guess what he did? Because he says, strangers conspired together against him. Him is Moses, and maligned him in the wilderness, even the men that were of Dathan, meaning their company, the Negroes, the bums that followed them, Abiron's side and the congregation of Korah with fury and wrath. So he, they, they had a, their own congregation within the congregation. You understand? So when he says all the congregation is holy, he was talking about the people that followed them. You understand? Because he, had a, he came with a company to Moses. Read verse 19. This the Lord saw. And Wait, hold on. Wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Read that apart. Read that part again. This what? This the Lord saw. Because some of you think the Lord don't see that. Some of you, you are so blinded by your own wickedness that you don't think the Lord sees this thing. The Lord sees this thing. The Lord see you. Ray. This the Lord saw, and it displeased him. It displeased the Mosai. Go ahead. And in his wrathful indignation were they consumed. No, no, they were they were they were pet, they were petted on the bank. Were they consumed? They were consumed, they were put to death. Read. He did wonders upon them mm. to consume them with the fiery flame. So he opened the earth, opened up, and they got swallowed up. That's the wonders that he did upon them. You understand? Watch this. Now, give me the book of 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 5. Now, 1 Samuel 18, verse 5. Let's read that. I'm going to move a little quicker. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 5. Read that. We're still dealing with the spirit of envy. Okay, the evil acts of envy. That's what we've been going over so far. We went with Cain. We went over what Cain did to his brother. You understand? We went what what we went over what Korah, Dathan, and Abiram did to Moses and Aaron, and the Lord destroyed them because of their evil acts of envy. Okay, disguised as what? Disguised on we want to help. You see that thing? First Samuel 18, verse 5. Read that. First book of Samuel chapter 18, verse 5. And really? David went out whithersoever Saul sent him. Mm -hmm. and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also right. in the sight of Saul's servant. So David had the love of the congregation. Go ahead. And it came to pass as they came. When David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the woman came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with Rain. tablets, with joy, and with instruments of music. So now they are excited because the Philistines were overthrown and David was being sent to go to wage wars against them and the Lord was with him. You understand? Read. And the woman answered one another as they played and said, Saul had slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. Because that's supposed to be all praises to the most High God, right? Go ahead. Come on. And Saul was very wroth. Saul was what? Was very wroth. So now, according to this, 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 you see the similarity, the parallels in what we read in Genesis. You understand? Saul, he slain his thousands. David slain his ten thousands. You see that thing? So Saul wasn't looking at the big picture and the women activated his, 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 simp, his, simp, his simp mode. Okay? So now it's a, and Saul was very wrong. That's the same word that was used when we were reading Genesis 4. It says Cain was very wrong and his countenance fell. He was mad as hell. Instead of being happy, he was wrong with David. You see that? Now he's, he's being activated because of the, the words that King David is doing, we, and David was not a king at this point. He's, he's wroth with the work that David is doing. Instead of actually being happy, you understand that, you know what? All praises to the most High God, the spirit is working with the brother. No, he didn't do that. But he had the spirit of envy and anger and hatred. He didn't, he didn't understand that 
We are all building. He didn't understand that thing. So he didn't see the bigger picture. Go ahead. And Saul was very wrong. And the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David 10,000. And to me, they have ascribed but thousands. Right. What can he have more but the kingdom? So now he's worried that, okay, that means now he's going to take the kingdom as well. But he's not focusing on the kingdom. He's supposed to be focusing on the kingdom and the, and, and the soldiers on the ground, they're supposed to be focusing on what? Following the, the taking the, the, the instructions and waging wars in the spirit of Christ while he's looking after what? The nation. That was supposed, that's his mindset. That was supposed to be his mindset, but that was not his mindset. You understand? Cain, he focused on his brother instead of focusing on what? Instead of focusing on what he did wrong so he can correct it. Saul's focus was supposed to be what? The kingdom. He focused on what David was doing and he had envy over what David was doing. He wasn't focusing on what he was supposed to what? To look after the flock. He didn't, that was not his focus. Okay, read. And so eyed David from that day and forward. Read that verse again, verse nine. Hmm, that's some heavy stuff. First book of Samuel chapter 18, verse nine. And so eyed David from that day and forward. He says, and so eyed David from that day and forward. So from that day, Saul developed an evil eye towards his brother. He developed an evil eye, the spirit of hatred, anger, and envy. You, you see that thing? Watch this. Give me Matthew 5, 22. Matthew chapter 5 is 22. The book of Matthew chapter 5 verses 22. Really? But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. You see that? King Saul was, he was what? He was angry with King David without a cause. For no reason. For no reason. And if there was a reason, guess what? He was supposed to go to the scriptures and fix that. Why do I hate my brother? He talked to your brother, listen, such and such and such. He didn't do that. He says he hated, he had, he had an evil eye, eye David from that day and forward. He had a, he developed an evil eye towards his, towards his brother. You understand? That's what he did. Okay, read. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka shall be in danger of the council. Come on. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. So Raka means what? Raka means thou fool. That's what that means. So you are just, you, are, you have hated towards your brother for no reason. And that's what David, that's what King Saul was towards David. You understand? And David did not return the, the hatred back. He loved King Saul. Even when King Saul died, he said, listen, you better mourn for your king. You better mourn for him. So David wasn't that type of brother. When King Saul died, he didn't speak evil of the brother. He didn't speak evil of King Saul. But today, Negroes, they are like that. Okay, watch this. Give me Proverbs 23 verse 6. Proverbs 23 verse 6. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 6. Read. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Mm -hmm. Neither desire thou his dainty meat. He says, don't eat the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Don't, meaning what? Meaning don't deal with, with, the, with the brother that has an evil eye against you. You understand? He says, neither desire thou his dainty meat. Don't desire even the things that they got because they have an evil eye towards you. That means they hate you. They have hatred against you. So that means they can do harm to you. You understand? Watch this. Now go back to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Go back to 1 Samuel. Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 18. 
1 Samuel 18 and verse 10. Watch what happens next. When, when Saul developed an evil eye towards David, this is the speed that jumped on Saul. Watch this. Verse 10. Come on. First book of Samuel chapter 18, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. The what? And he that's the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. That the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. So the Lord allowed the devil to jump on Saul because of that evil eye. So when you have an evil eye towards your brother, you hate your brother, the Lord is going to allow this, the, de the spirit of the, the demon to jump on you. At that point, the devil is on you. At that point, you got the devil on you. At that point. You see, you see immediately, he said, it came to pass on the morrow that the, de the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. You see that? Because of what he had, he, him having envy towards his brother, hatred against his brother, right? And he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his hand as at other times. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. So now David, remember David was playing the harp. So it says, and he says, David played in his, with his hand and as, as other times, as he always does, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. Now, now remember, verse nine, Saul had an evil eye towards David. The, the, the devil jumped on Saul. Now he is looking at King David. He's consumed with the spirit of envy. Remember it says, and Saul eyed David from that day and forward. So this was a what a persistent feeling that he was hovering, he was going, I hope, uh, he was moving around with. Okay, read on. Watch this. A javelin is a what? A javelin is a weapon of war. Keep reading. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. It says, and Saul was afraid of David. Saul was afraid of David. Why? Because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. So that's the same thing we read in Genesis 4. The Lord was with Abel, our brother, and he departed from who? Cain. Who, who jumped on Cain? What spirit jumped on Cain? The devil. The devil ruled over Cain, just like the devil was ruling over Saul. Because the Lord was with King David, was with David before he was, he was not the king at this point. When so and Saul saw that. You understand? He saw that the Lord was with him. Instead of actually praying to the Lord to get rid of that spirit that he has, so the Lord can be with him also, he decides, you know what? I'm instead of examining myself, I'm gonna use the anger and envy and hatred, you understand, to use it as a fuel to hate my brother, to kill my brother. You see that? Ray. Therefore, Saul removed him from him and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. So now, and the reason why he sent him out, you understand? The reason why Saul sent David out as the captain of, of the host and so forth, he, it, he's, he was hoping that David can be, will be put to death out there. That was the mindset. You, you see that? Keep reading. Come on. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. So guess what? The same way our forefather Abel, Abel, he behaved himself wisely in the sight of the Lord. Guess what? David did the same thing. Moses did the same thing. Aaron did the same thing. He, they behaved themselves wisely. When Korandathan came upon them, they behaved themselves wisely. You understand? When Cain came upon, um, when Cain was very wroth and so forth, Abel behaved himself wisely because he was in the scripts. He was in the commandments. You understand? To try to what? To show his brothers and listen, get, get yourself right with the Lord. The, King Saul did not do that. He didn't do that. You understand? Read verse 15. Come on. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. Why was he afraid? Was he, was, he, was he really afraid of David? No, he wasn't afraid of David. He was afraid that the Lord was with David. That was the fear. You see, when the Lord is with you, guess what? 
Don't nobody gonna mess with you if the Lord is with you. When the Lord is with you and you sincerely believe on this truth, you keep the commandments of the Most High God, no wicked Negro will walk up in here to try to destroy everything we're building here in the spirit of Christ. That's why Nehemiah was the same way. When they were trying to stop him from building, what did he do? He says, Father, strengthen my hands. He didn't, they, he didn't allow the spirit of fear to jump on him because that was the point. And window shoppers, that's what they do. They want to bring the spirit of fear in the camp. That's not going to happen. I've seen this before many times, okay? That's nothing. You are just a recycled demon. You will keep, you, guess what? You will implode on yourself. You will keep it moving if you don't repent. Understand that, okay? Watch this. Um, keep reading verse 16. Come on. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. Because, because he went out to war. And when he did go out to war, the Lord was with him. So guess what? We keep the commandments of the Most High. We go out there. We push the, we, we push the laws of the Most High God for our people to repent. And guess what? The thing that will surprise you, you will always find a brother, he goes with us to camp. We go to do flyer missions. We be going to teach in different places, but he don't believe. He's hoping that we, this will stop. You, you Listen, you can't make it up. You'll always have that wicked Negro that will be sitting there. He doesn't want this camp to grow. He doesn't want us to reach our people. He's happy when we teach the whole day and nobody comes in the front. No, there's always people around listening. The people don't have to be standing in front of you to be listening. They are listening all the time. You understand? But what I'm trying to show you is that you'll be surprised. Why is then are you, is this brother coming? He's got so much hatred, he's got anger and all of that, but he's still coming. Why? Because guess what he's doing? Remember I said they sent forth spies. He's seeing which places we're going to teach. You understand how the people receive in the gospel? He's just sitting right there, that nigga right there in the corner. You see that? Watch this. Jump down to verse 29 now. First Samuel 18, 29. Okay. First book of Samuel, chapter 18, verses 29. Read. Really? And so was yet the more afraid of David, and so became David's enemy continually. You see what he's saying? He says, Saul was yet more afraid of David, and Saul became David's enemy continually. Remember in, in, in 1 Samuel 18, verse 9, he says, and Saul eyed David from that day and forward. Continually, he became David's enemy. For no reason, like we read in Matthew 5, 22, that's exactly what Saul did. Watch this. Give me, um, from there, from there, give me Matthew 27. Give me Matthew 27, verse 11. Let's fast forward now to the future. Because these spirits, they get they keep getting. I'm showing you these recycled demons from the time of Adam and Eve until this day. These spirits just get keep getting recycled. So don't be surprised when they pop up. Okay. Matthew 27 now. Watch this. Matthew 27, verse 11. Let's read that. The book of Matthew. Chapter 27, verse 11. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 11. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest, you see, he says, are you king of the Jews? He says, you, that's what you say. Keep reading. Listen, we're going to find out who the governor is. Come on. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Because they accused him falsely. The chief priests, because they hated him. Okay, come on. Then said Pilate unto him. Pilate, Pilate. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 13. Then said Pilate unto him, mm -hmm. Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? Is he what is it? the Pilate? He is the governor in verse 11. It says, Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against you? 
Meaning what these people, they are witnessing against you. You understand? They are accusing you falsely. Go ahead. And he answered him to never a word. In mm -hmm. so much that the governor marveled greatly. Meaning Christ said nothing. Okay, read. Now, at the feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. So he says, now at, at that feast, what feast was this? The feast of Passover. It says the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. So this is called amnesty. You understand? Amnesty. So meaning what? One prisoner will be free, will, will be let loose, you understand? To be to they'll give him his freedoms. So now they're gonna ask who must be released from prison. Go ahead. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. So Barabbas was a notable prisoner. He was a killer. You understand? He was a murderer. Go ahead. Therefore, when they gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you? Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? So he's asking, so who must I release? Barabbas or must I release Jesus, who is called Christ? Watch this. Come on. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Read that again, verse 18. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 18. For mm -hmm. he knew that for envy they had delivered him. So the he that knew that for envy they delivered him was who? The he, Pilate, the white man. The white man was able to figure out that the reason why they want Christ, they want Barabbas to be released and Christ to be kept in prison is because of envy, because of hatred, because of bitterness, because Christ was teaching like no other. You understand? Instead of learning from the man, guess what? They wanted to do what? They wanted to, they wanted to destroy him. They wanted to have him killed so that he does not have to teach the gospel because he was messing up with their money and the status that they had that Rome gave unto them. So, but Pilate was able to figure out that the reason why they are behaving like this is because of envy. That's why they are treating this man like this. Watch this. Give me the book of Mark 15, verse 10. Mark, chapter 15, verse 10. Okay. The book of Mark, chapter 15, verses 10. Mm -hmm. But the chief priest moved the people. No, no. 15, verse 10. We're going to read down. The book of Mark, chapter 15, verse 10. For mm -hmm. he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for any. He's now he's telling you. He's telling you, says, but he says what? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. So the chief priest delivered Christ to be what? To be crucified because of envy, anger, and hatred. You understand? And the work that Christ was doing and the teachings that Christ was doing. Okay, read. But the chief priest moved the people. They did he, what? But the chief priests moved the people. So the chief priests, they moved the people. You see, mob rule. Mob rule. This is mob rule. It says, but the chief priests moved the people, the majority of the people, that what? Come on. That he should release Barabbas unto them. He should rather release Barabbas unto them. Meaning release Barabbas, keep Christ in prison because we want to have we want to have him beheaded. We want him to be put to death, crucified. Keep reading, verse 12, come on. That he should rather release Barabbas unto them. Come on. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, what will ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? Come on, watch this. And they cried out again, Crucify him. Mm -hmm. What did they say? Crucify him. You see, they said they cried, they cried out that they is the crowd that was moved by the priest. So the high priest, the scribes and Pharisees, they what they move the people to do what to cry out against Christ to say what? Crucify him. They are telling the white man. And he knew the reason why they are doing this because they envy this man. Go ahead. 
Then Pilate said unto them, Why? What evil had he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, crucify him. You see that thing? They did not want to listen to reason, nor did they want to respond to what Pilate was asking them. So they can give their, is there a valid reason why this man must be crucified? Is that they cry out the more exceedingly, crucify him. You see that thing? Because of envy, meaning kill him. What I'm showing you here is that the spirit of envy is a murderous spirit. The spirit of envy is the spirit of hatred. You understand? Is the spirit of toxicity. You are harboring toxic feelings, and guess what? They're going to destroy you and the people that you eventually spill those toxic emotions to. That's what the Lord is trying to show us here, that we must not be harboring evil in our spirits. You must use the laws of God to cleanse you from those filthiness that you are harboring. Okay? Watch this. Give me Job 5, 5 verse 2. Job chapter 5 verse 2. Job chapter 5 and verse 2. Read them. The book of Job, chapter 5, verses 2. Me? For red killeth the foolish man, and envy slayeth the silly one. Read that again. That's some heavy stuff right there. Read again. The book of Job, chapter 5, verse 2. For mm -hmm. red killeth the foolish man, and envy slayeth the silly one. You see that thing? Red killeth the foolish man. The foolish man is the one that hates the laws of God. That's a sin. And envy slayeth the silly one. Envy will slay, will get a sin killed. Sims get killed because of envy. You understand? Because envy, envy is a spirit that consumes you. So that's what Job is saying right there. He says, envy will slay the silly one. Meaning you are silly. You dumb as hell. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You understand? Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 6.23. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 verse 23. Come on. Neither will I go with consuming envy. You see that? Neither will I go with consuming envy. The spirit of envy will consume you. Just like it consumed Cain, just like it consumed Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Just like it consumed Saul, King Saul. Just like it consumed the scribes and Pharisees. They couldn't help themselves. You understand? He says, neither will I go with consuming envy. Because you lose all manner of common sense when envy is the spirit of envy jumps on. Really? For such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. You see, you see, the Lord says you're not going to have fellowship with wisdom. To have fellowship with wisdom, that means you are in the spirit. You understand? You have sense at that point. But once you, the spirit of envy jumps on you and you don't repent from it, you don't repent from that spirit, guess what? The spirit, of, the spirit of wisdom will also leave you because the Lord says such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs 27 verse 4. Proverbs 27 and verse 4. The book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 4. Read. Wrath is cruel, mm -hmm. and anger is outrageous. Read. But who is able to stand before envy? You see that thing? Cruel, cruelty, anger. You understand? Wrath and anger, it says those things, they are cruel. One is cruel, the other is outrageous. But it says, who is able to stand before envy? Because envy it runs deep in your spirit. You understand? Envy is very subtle, but it's very hot in your mind. But you hide it very well. That's why it says, who's able to stand before that? Because that one is very easy to hide and is the, that's the most dangerous one. You see that thing? That's the most dangerous one right there. That's where abuses come from. You understand? That's where these killings that you see that are happening in the country, that they come from. 
all these uh, murdering, the, 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 the murders that you see, the rapes that you see of children. Are you kidding me? It's because of the spirit of envy, which is what? Hatred, which is bitterness. You understand? The hotness of the mind. That's what, that's the spirit of envy. You understand? So that's why you sisters, you need to make sure that the brothers that you want to gonna prove in the future, make sure that you can examine if they have the spirit of envy, which is the spirit of what? The spirit of anger. You understand? The spirit of hatred, the spirit of rage. Okay, because guess what? You don't look at those things. You are looking at the outward appearance and so forth. You're gonna marry a monster and that monster will eventually kill you because you don't what? You're not using the scriptures to vet this man. You understand? I need you sisters to understand that. Pay close attention, okay? Especially these emotional brothers. Those are the, the emotional brothers, those are the ones you need to watch the most. Because the emotional brothers are the ones that will end up putting you to death because they have the spirit of rage and is sitting down there in the gut. Small things, they become emotional and defensive. Those are the ones you need to watch for. You understand? You need to watch those ones. Why? Because they don't want to apply the scripts and they hide this demon, this demon within them and you're not going to see it. Okay? These are warning shots. So understand that thing. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs 14 verse 30. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 30. Read them. The book of Proverbs chapter 14 verse 30. Mm -hmm. A sound heart is the life of the flesh. Really? But envy the rottenness of the bones. Mm, that's some heavy stuff. Read it again, read it again. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 14 verse 30. Really? A sound heart is the life of the flesh. Mm -hmm. But envy the rottenness of the bones. But envy is the rottenness of the bones because envy is a consuming spirit. You understand? The rottenness of the bones, the bones talk about your mind, is going to what? Is gonna, your mind is going to be rotten with what? Evil, hatred, anger. You understand? You're going to have all manner of demons on you because your mind is rotten. Your mind is sick. Your mind has got demons on them and you don't want to let go of them. So guess what? That rottenness of your mind, you're going to affect somebody else with it. Instead of examining yourself, you're going to use that to fuel you to kill someone with it. Like we've seen here. Okay? Like all the examples that we've seen. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 45. Because this is what I was talking about earlier. Okay? It says, you will have brothers that are among us, but they don't really believe in what we, are, what, 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 what we teach. They don't believe what the scriptures have to say. They are among us because they are monitoring because they are spies. Understand that. Because you might think, mm, you know, I'm just talking out of 10. No, but the scripture bears witness. The scripture tells you that. You understand? I've seen that thing firsthand. Spies. I've seen it in the camp. I've seen that thing. You understand? That's the topic for another day. Give me that in Acts chapter 13, verse 45. Read that for me. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 13, verses 45. Read. Really? But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy mm. and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. You see, these are signs. These are signs. Remember what we read in, in Sirach chapter 12, when it says, and they want to, they will try to undermine you, second guess. That's what we're reading here. You see, Luke is explaining the same thing. He says, but when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which are spoken by Paul, contradicting and blasphemy. You see that thing right there? They, they, they like to argue. You understand? They like to argue. Guess what? We're reading about the same spirits right here. They are filled with envy and they speak against the things that are spoken by the prophets. They will contradict, they will blaspheme. But they'll still be among us. You'll be asking yourself, why is this Negro here? The Lord is using this Negro to prove us and to what? 
to prove that don't follow that wicked Negro. Okay, watch this. Give me that in Acts 17 verse 5. Okay, Acts chapter 17 verse 5. Watch this. Then remember, this is Thessalonica. Okay, where they don't believe nothing. So, but you will have those that, guess what? You will have those Jews which they know the scriptures, but they'll still go against this. And guess what? You're not going to outright just come out and say, I don't believe what the scriptures say. No, they don't do it like that. Remember what we read in, in number 16, verse 3. They don't come direct like that. There will just be these subtle disagreements. You say something, they say something contradictory to what you just said. They will second guess you. So they won't come out outright and say, I don't believe that. Even at camp, you ever notice at camp, the people won't say, I don't believe the Bible. They won't say, I hate the black image of Christ. No, they won't say that. They will say, color doesn't matter. You see, very subtle. They're not going to come out and tell you straight. They are not going to say, I hate the Bible. They will say, mm, that's your interpretation. You see that? So likewise, is the same thing what we're reading here. Acts 17, verse 5. The book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 5. Great. But the Jews which believe not moved with envy. Stop right Took here. But the Jews which believed not. You see that? So, the, when you see a brother don't believe, you see a sister don't believe, but they are very subtle with it, is because they have envy is because they don't believe. That envy, by the way, is hatred. They don't want their people to rise, but they will be here. Because you have to ask yourself, why would you be here if you don't want your people to rise? No, because you are a spy. You are an informant. Yeah, that's why I said it. You are an informant. When you see the spirit of resistance, guess what? Me, I'm looking at you. You are a Judas. Yeah. The spirit of resistance, guess what? That means you're going to pose a threat to this movement. Okay. Once I see that, I have to be very, 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 I have to be very careful around you. You see what I'm saying? I have to be very careful around you. Why? Because you, guess what? You will betray this gospel. So I have to watch stuff. I, me, I watch stuff like that because the scripture says to watch. Don't be sleeping up in here. Read again. That's fine. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 17, verse 5. But the mm -hmm. Jews, which believe not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort. That's what Korah, Dathan, and Abiram did. They took those wicked, grimy, black, ashy demons. You understand? Go ahead. And gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar mm. and assaulted the house of Jason and so to bring them out to the people. You see what they was doing? They were gathered, they gathered the people together that they knew hated this gospel. They knew hated the apostles. The same thing that the chief priests and the scribes was doing when they, 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 they said, crucify him. I mean, talking, talking, referring to Christ. That's the same thing today with us. When we go out, you see how the level of hatred that people have towards the prophets, they hate and they despise our guts. You understand? They do that. They despise our God. Because why? They have anger, envy, and hatred, which is all the same thing. You understand? So that's what we're reading here. Envy, that's the spirit of what unbelief. They don't believe this gospel, but they will be among us because they want to see how far we get because they don't think that we're going to become a multitude. But the scripture says that. Me, I believe what the scripture says. The scripture says Israel is going to grow. Me, I believe that because it's written. All we have to do, keep the commandments, and the Lord will grow because that's his decision. But we don't stop pushing the gospel. We push. When the Mosai is ready to grow as he will, I don't have to worry about that right now. Watch this. Give me the book of Philippians, okay? Chapter 1, verse 15. Philippians 1, okay? Read that. The book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 3. No, verse 15. I... Hold on. Philippians 1, verse 15. Read verse 15. The book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 15. 
Mm -hmm. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife. Mm. And some also of goodwill. You see what the Apostle Paul was saying when he was in the church of Philippi? Is because he saw it as like, wait a minute. Some indeed they preach Christ, but they are not doing it out of goodwill. They are doing it out of envy and strife. Remember, it says the signs of envy is what? You want to outdo, you want to have a one up on your brother. That's what we're needing here. So you teach, but you're not teaching because you are want to edify the people. You are doing it because you are doing it out of envy and out of strife. You see that? You're not doing it because you are doing it in goodwill. You are doing it out of envy and strife. So guess what? Because of that, you are not really going to grow spiritually. The basic things, you will stumble at those things. Why? Because you do it out of envy and strife. It's not out of goodwill, like the Apostle Paul is saying here. Keep reading. Verse 16. The book of Philippians chapter 1, verse 16. The one preaches Jesus. The book of Philippians chapter 1, verse 16. The one preach Christ of contention, mm -hmm. not sincerely. Really? Supposing to add affliction to my bonds. You see what he's saying? He says, one will preach Christ, but out of contention. You are doing it with a contentious spirit. Not sincerely. You're not doing it because you want to edify the people. But supposing to add affliction to my bond. Meaning you are making, you are making this work so much harder for us. That's what the Lord is saying. So guess what? You cannot be doing this out of envy and strife to cause strife. You do it to edify the people. That's the point. But when you have the spirit of envy, you're not going to do it out of goodwill. And eventually, you're going to start to do what? You're going to start to lose the zeal that you had when you first came in. You start to burn out. Why? Because you're not doing it sincerely. Because you are a spring chicken. You know spring chicken? They are born today, tomorrow they are sold to the shops. That's a spring chicken. You see, this walk is not about the swift. This walk is about you must be patient. You must apply yourself. You must give yourself time to grow. You understand? You give yourself to time to grow and develop. That's the point. That's what the Lord is looking for. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Timothy 6 and 4. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 4. Read them. 1 book of Timothy chapter 6, verse 4. Mm -hmm. He is proud. Read. Knowing nothing. They don't know nothing. Come on. Knowing nothing, but dotting about questions and strifes of words. Come Wherefore on. cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. Surmisings, evil surmisings. So it says he is proud, knowing nothing, but dotting about questions and strifes of words. Whereof cometh envy. So you see that? Going back to when we have the Q&As, brothers and sisters, is, is to edify. So others can learn from the questions you ask. You understand? But some brothers, they will ask questions not because they really want to learn. They ask questions because they want to test. So guess what? Who are you testing really? Think about it. Because this doctrine is not mine. It's the Lord's. So, which means you testing the Lord. You see, like a, the spirit of envy, it will blind you. It will blind you to what this Bible is saying. So, could you imagine we are at camp, brothers come because they will have, you will have scoffers that will come and ask just to ask, but not because they really want to learn, but they want to ask because they want to really give, they, they want to have an opinion. They don't really believe what this Bible is saying. And when you bring out the understanding, they are not even listening. Guess what? The same thing that you see when we go outside to, the, to teach our people, you will, you will be surprised that you will find the same spirit within the body. I'm like, but why would you actually waste so much energy to doing that? 
you could actually use that energy to actually study and learn. Genuinely, the Lord will store, help you to store those things in your spirit so you can be a benefit to your nation. So how do you overcome this? Watch this. Give me, hmm, you know what? Before I get there, give me Sarah 37 verse 10. Come on, Sarah 37 verse 10. Read what you got. Read. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 37, verse 10. Come on. Consult not with one that suspected thee. Mm -hmm. Read. And hide thou counsel from such as envy thee. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, don't consult with one that suspects you. You understand? Or the one that undermines you. Already, they are already calculating. Hmm. You remember what we read in Sarah 12? Yes. So keep that in mind. Don't lose the thought now. It says, consult not with one that suspected thee, and hide thy counsel from such as envy. Meaning what? Don't give them counsel. He says, the Lord says, hide your counsel from them. Hide your counsel from them because they have an evil suspicion. You understand? They have an evil suspicion. The only reason why the only reason why you will have an evil suspicion, you see, window shopping is a very dangerous business. Okay. Very dangerous business. Okay. See, brothers be doing that. Listen, you destroy your own soul. You are messing yourself up. Okay. You are messing yourself up. Stay in the spirit and learn. Apply yourself. Okay. Put effort in actually sitting down and studying this book and applying it. That's how you're going to grow. You understand? Speaking of which, give me that in First Peter 2. First Peter, to avoid this, all of this, all these problems that we just posed, all these uh, precepts that we, we brought out, you understand? The examples of our forefathers in the past, this is what the Lord said through the Apostle Peter right here. Watch this. This is a very powerful verse right here. First Peter's, okay. First Peter's two verse one. Watch this. First book of Peter chapter two verse one. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, laying aside all malice mm. and all guile. Stop right there. So it says you must lay aside all, not some, all of it, meaning let it go. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile, bitterness, okay? Read on. And all guile and hypocrisies and, and envies. hypocrisy, hypocrisy and what? And envies. And envies. Remember, this is, mal this is plural. And envies, meaning what? Envy has depths and levels to it. That's what the Apostle Peter is teaching us here in the Spirit of Christ. Is that's why it says, and these, and all evil speaking. The Lord is commanding us, that, listen, get rid of this stuff. Cleanse your spirit, cleanse your mind. You understand? And get rid of these things. That's the first order of business. You understand? Set your house in order. House cleaning. That's what the Lord is commanding us here. And envies and all evil speaking. Once you've done all of the one, once you do all these things, here's what happens. Next verse. Go ahead. As newborn babes mm -hmm. desire the sincere milk of the word that he may grow thereby. Now, you see that part right there when it says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Remember what we read in Proverbs. Go back to Proverbs 14, verse 30. Remember, as a newborn babe, meaning you are a newborn baby, you are born again, born of God, like we read last night in John 1, verse 12 and 13. Yes. So get Proverbs 14, verse 30. I'm going to show you something with this. As newborn babes. Watch this. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. Come on. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verses 30. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy, the rottenness of the bones. Is as envy is the rottenness of the bones, meaning your mind. So if you have envy, that means your mind is rotten. But guess what? Verse 2, go back to 1 Peter 2, verse 2. Watch this. 1 Peter 2 and verse 2. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 2. As Come on. you open page, desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow the pie. So as newborn babes, so if you when you are a newborn baby, that means what? Give me that in Ephesians 4.23. Ephesians, a newborn babe, because when you are born again, what is what is supposed to change? Your thinking, your mindset must change. Your spirit, the spirit of your mind must be renewed in the way in which it thinks and makes decisions. Okay, Ephesians 4.23, read that. Come on, Ephesians 4.23. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. It says you must be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So when it says envy is the rottenness of the bones, meaning the mind, guess what? In order for you to be a newborn babe and desire the sincere milk of the way that you may grow, your mind must be renewed. The spirit of your mind must be renewed. That's how you're going to get rid of the rottenness of your mind. The rottenness of your mind is not going to happen if your mind is not renewed. Once the spirit of your mind is renewed, here's what happens next. Keep going. Verse 24. And that ye put on the new man. The new boy. The new man. The new creature in Christ. You put on the new man. Yeah, because your mind is renewed. When your mind is renewed, you are completely, you, are, you become a new person altogether. Because the laws of God is governing your decision making in the way you think. Read. And that he put on the new man, he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So this new man is created in righteousness and true holiness, meaning you are not faking the fuck. You are created in, in righteousness and in true holiness. So this new man has a new mind. That means you get rid of the rottenness of your mind. Guess what? The growth, that's when growth begins. That's when you begin to grow at this point. But until then, you are not going to grow. You will become, you will remain that spiritual midget who's filled with envy, anger, hatred, and bitterness, and holding a grudge. You can't let nothing go. You will have and stockpile evil. You see that thing? Go back to verse Peter's now, 2 verse 2. First book of Peter, chapter 2 verse 2. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that he may grow thereby. That you may grow thereby. Next verse, watch this, because there's a colon here. So he's going to tell you that when you grow, this growth is going to continue. You're going to continue to grow if you do what? Keep going. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Because you've tasted the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Once you taste the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, you really truly understand that Grace is to teach you to deny ungodliness. Like it says in Titus 2, verse 11 and 12. Guess what? Once you taste the, the, taste the grace of the Lord, guess what? You're going to continue to, you're gonna, you'll continue to desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow. So now as you grow, your mind is growing. Your mind is changing. You become that new man, that new woman. You understand? Who, who is created in righteousness and in true holiness. That's how you what? That's how 
how you, you stop the evil acts of envy in their tracks. You, all you have to do is do this, apply. That's all that's left. There's no magic. You just apply. You understand? Apply yourself. That's all that's left. And the most God will definitely deliver you on that day. Understand that thing. Okay, all praise to the most. I'm going to end that class right there. Okay, let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay. Come on, First Corinthians eleven twenty three. First Book of Corinthians chapter eleven verse twenty three. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 